everybody, welcome back to h &S Collectibles, this is Cody, um, and I'm trying to play some serious catch-up this evening. Uh, so this is my top 20 for 2020 um, list of sequels. So uh, top 20 is of course a list that was started by Joe the Horror Man and Jason over at Horrific Nightmares, links down below, check them out if you haven't. Uh, to just you know give our top 20 in different categories every two weeks and I am two weeks behind um, so I'm gonna be doing this one and another one uh, but anyway this time around it was top 20 sequels um, now the first one I don't have uh, in the collection I actually don't have any of them gonna have to pick them up at some point but just haven't uh, scream 2 so I enjoy scream 2 and I gotta go with it just because of how much I like Tim Oliphant. Um, so that's the main reason there. Uh, number 19, Hellraiser 2. Um, I, I tried to base a lot of these on which sequel I thought amped it up the most. Um, and I've only seen the first four Hellraisers, so I can't speak to the others. Uh, but I just, Hellraiser 2 is so great, it's gory. Um, takes it in a little different direction. I love this particular uh, Cenobite on the cover, that psychiatrist that becomes one. Uh, and I got this from uh, the Daigler's reviews for winning his contest, so thanks Ian for that. Uh, so that's number 19. Uh, number 18, Saw 2. Um, as far as story goes, I think the first two saws are the strongest. After that, it just kind of became, you know, the, the torture porn that we're used to. Um, but yeah, I like the, like the twist ending. Uh, yeah, I'll we'll go with Saw 2. Number 18, another one I don't have in the collection, but Psycho 2. Um, haven't seen it in a while. Really need to pick it up. Uh, always like that one. Um, let's see, number 16. Return of the Living Dead Part 2. Um, Scream Factory has a Blu-ray release of it out. This is a VHS rip that I got at a convention from a place called uh, VHSPS.com uh, that specializes in uh, VHS rips of movies that aren't available on DVD. Um, but yeah, Return of the Living Dead is 2 is it really upped the slapstick element. Probably and definitely not the gore. Um, but this is one I saw in the theater as a kid and just always had a special place for me. Uh, another one that I don't have, uh, next up on the list, number 15, Final Destination 5. Um, I don't think it really, you know, amped it up any, but I love the ending. Uh, um, just that, that twist at the end was so satisfying, so great. Um, just, yeah, thought it was good. Uh, let's see, number 14, and I will just say some of these were really hard to rank, um, but Phantasm 4, Phantasm 2 I think was much more of an action film, a little bit of a departure from the first one, Phantasm 3, uh, as some of you know I have issue with some of the cast, particularly that kid, and then the, uh, the bad guys, the, the thugs, the punks, I thought were just over the top, ridiculous, stupid. Um, but part four, I think, brought it back to what the first movie was. And I loved how Coscarelli uh, worked in the old deleted scenes. Um, so number four, and oh man, it was a tough decision to put it lo this low on the list. But as we go, I think you'll, you'll see why. Um, Next up, number 13, another one that I don't have, but definitely need to pick up. It's in my Amazon cart. Oh, I'll just pull the trigger because it's one that I love. Probably my favorite of the series, but Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Love Ken Foray in it. Love Viggo Mortensen in it. Love the interaction of the family. Um, I, again, it was one that I saw as a kid that always stuck with me. Uh, just really, really dug that movie. Um, number 12, Blade 2. Um, of the three Blade movies, part one's my favorite, but part two is a close, close second, of course. Um, very good. Love Ron Perlman in it. Um, and, uh, yeah, just neat monster. You know, the, uh, the vampires are trying to kill the others. Uh, pretty cool. Um, let's see, number 11, 
Creep Show 2. Uh, it was hard not to rank this one higher. Uh, just others edged it out. Um, this is the Arrow release. Um, very good transfer on it. Uh, Chief Woodenhead's got to be my favorite story. Um, I really, really wish that this could have been expanded a little bit. If you ever read about the episode Pinfall, I want to see that done. That that needs to be done at some point. Uh, another Stephen King, and a fairly recent one, uh, It Chapter 2. Really liked most of the casting that they picked. Still wasn't impressed with who they picked for Beverly, but I love Bill Hatter. Um, I love James McAvoy. Uh, I think they all did real well in this. So, uh, you know, a little weak in the ending. Like Stephen King's cameo where he kind of made fun of himself for, for writing endings bad. Um, but yeah, It Chapter 2. And another King... Uh, and a recent one, Dr. Sleep. Um, you know, this came out within the last year or so. I can't say enough good things about this movie. It's got, it's got enough fan, uh, what's the word, uh, uh, fan service to, to make me really happy. Um, you know, enough references to The Shining, uh, to, to just really enthrall me uh, without trying to be a remake of The Shining or a direct sequel. I like where they took the story and and I just uh, really enjoy it. It's a good movie all the way through. Great pacing um, and a great soundtrack too. Let's see. Um, number eight, Nightmare on Elm Street 4. Um, you know, so the big time slashers had to be high on the list. Uh, when you ask me my favorite Nightmare on Elm Street, I always say three and four. I almost treat them as if they're one movie. Um, but yeah, if I had to pick one, part four. Um, just really enjoy Freddy in that one. Uh, number seven, Godzilla 85. Um, so this is my VHS of it. It's never been put on DVD or Blu-ray, to my knowledge. And I'm a little upset that we, in this set, we got this cheesy picture of Godzilla on the front when when you lined up all the VHS in the set it made the image from the cover of 85 um, but you know this was his first solo movie since the original acted as it was direct sequel to the first one uh, you got Raymond Burr back you had a great soundtrack and you had one of the best endings ever for a Godzilla movie that can still make me emotional to this day um, number six Child's Play Part 2 uh, truth be told, this is my favorite of the Child's Play series. Uh, I like the showdown at the factory. I like some of Chucky's kills in it. And I just really like it when he puts the knife on his hand. Um, and when we met, uh, we met Brad Dourif and I actually had him sign a shot from this Child's Play. Let's see, number five, and I don't have it by itself, only in a set, so this is my NECA box that C.J. Graham signed. I always like to show that off. Uh, but Friday the 13th, part six, Jason Lives. Um, you know, this is his first appearance as the official zombie Jason. Um, you know, had the Alice Cooper song. Uh, Tom Matthews was in it and did a great job playing Tommy. Um, so yeah, my favorite, actually my favorite Jason movie of the series, and my favorite sequel. So, um, let's see, number four, Army of Darkness, or Evil Dead 3. Uh, tough choice between Evil Dead 2 and Evil Dead 3, and I went with Army of Darkness because this is the one that the family likes to watch more. Um, we, they'll always watch it with me, and everybody gets a kick out of it, so Army of Darkness. Uh, next up, number three, Halloween 2. Um, you know, sequels don't get much better than this, in my opinion. Uh, you know, when I grew up, we watched Halloween 2 a lot, Halloween 1 and 2, and you could watch them back to back. The way that they flow together on the same night is almost perfect. And, uh, yeah, and love the ending. It could have ended there. So, and let's see, number two... I'm going with Aliens. Um, again, basing it on 
you know which movie amped it up more you've got uh, the action um, Lance Henriksen is awesome in it he signed this one for us signed it to my son hey Sam Lance Henriksen um, love the dynamic as with Ripley kind of being a mother to Newt um, fighting the Queens seeing how the aliens lived in the hive colony and of course the loader fight there's just so much good about this movie um, that it's hard to put in <laughs> in one little short paragraph and then number one and I'm gonna have to straighten it up because it got crooked in my shadow box but Dawn of the Dead it's always a tough choice between Dawn of the Dead and Day of the Dead and uh, I'm gonna give it to Dawn I usually do uh, so that's my favorite sequel it like I said when it comes to amping it up it took Night of the Living Dead to the next level uh, people have been run out of their homes. They can no longer survive in the homes or the farmhouses. What do you do next? You've got that complete societal breakdown. Um, the looting, the rioting, all that stuff is taking place. Uh, how do you survive? What do you do to survive? And I just thought this was a great idea. So that's my top 20 sequels for 2020. Um, hopefully I get back on track after this and am not behind next time. So... If you haven't already like and subscribe go check out joe go check out jason and i'll talk to you later thanks